Hey, welcome back. So now you're saying, last it's fine. Now I know how to clone, but I want to make my own repository. I don't care about other people's repository. You should, because other people make great code out there. Uh, so you might want to learn to use other people's code as a startup. But that being said, you can make your own. I'm going to show you in this lesson a command called git init. And the git init command is for us to take a directory and say this is a git folder. And all it's doing behind the scenes is just adding this .git folder for you, right? So that we can start tracking history for a specific folder. So let's try and do it. I'm going to do this using the terminal first. And I want that because I want to show you the very basic way to do a git init where the GitHub desktop client, he also adds some files and does some more uh, add some more information than we actually require for a very basic git init. So I just want to show you how we can do it using a command to initialize our own github repository. So let's try and do that. Let's uh, start up by just looking at the PowerShell. I just started up um, the git shell here and here I have my git commands. So I want to do a git init and let's just read the documentation again. I found this tutorial under atlassian.com and if you want the path let me just zoom a bit. Um, there it is, dilly dilly dilly, I'll just zoom out again. So I want to do a git init and I want to tell it what directory I want to be my git directory. And we're just going to make a new directory and let's just call it uh, calculator. That's a new app I want to build. Calculator. So I'll press enter and it initialized an empty git repository under CD, uh, C work calculator. So let me go in there, cd calculator. And um, now I'm in an actual Git repository, right? So that was how simple it was to create a local repository. Remember, this is just on my machine. But already now I actually have version control for that folder. So now it knows any change I make. Let's try to add it to the, um, the desktop client just to show you guys that again. I'll go in here, I'll add it, I'll find my path here. I have my calculator. And I'll press OK. I'll say this is uh, at this repository. Now I have the calculator repository here with no changes at all. So let's add our first file here. And I'll just go into the file explorer as the last step just to show you that one as well. Under work, I have a new folder called calculator. All it contains is the actual git folder. So let's just add a new document here. I'll just add a new text document. Very basic. You just call it cheese, so text. And in there, I'll just add a bit of text. Hi all. I am Frodo. I'll save this, I'll shut it down. Okay, so now I can actually see this change in here. Just like I showed you before, in the git desktop client, I can actually see that I added a new file here. So it already have the history available. Another thing I can actually see is by using a command called git status, I'll actually also be told that you have a new file that's untracked right now called cheese.txt. So already now I have the information, I'm a git repository and I can start doing all my git commands. It's not in the cloud, it's on your local machine, but you still have the version control available until your machine is destroyed or your hard disk is lost. So that's a great start. See you in the next lesson where we'll do the same with the desktop client.